Hi, my name is Timmy Willis, and welcome to a, a extraordinary special segment of Up Close and Personal. You know, I like to bring my guests to you up close and personal, and today it, it, it brings me great pleasure to bring to you the one and only Chef Alfredo. How you doing, Chef Alfredo? I am well today. Good to see you. Same here, sir. Hey, Thank thanks. You. Thanks for. I know you got a very busy schedule, and I appreciate you coming down and uh, sitting down and sharing some uh, some of your uh, fascinating life with us. Yes. yes. So we're going to get started right now. I'm going to ask you, where were you born? I was born in the in the Bahamas. In the Bahamas. A place called Andros. Okay. That's the largest. That's the largest island in the Bahamas. Yeah. And it's in the little uh, town that I come from was called. Mastic Point, Andrews. Okay. Yes. Now, when you was little, I mean, what was it like for you growing up there? Well, uh, growing up there, it all was natural. Everything was natural. We didn't have no electric light, no stove. Everything was cooked like Mother Nature had had in mind at the beginning. Mm -hmm. We had to go for wood. We had to go to a fresh water pond, tote water on your head, bring it but we could drink it. Mm -hmm. but then uh, uh, there, no automobile, no telephone, nothing such as when I was coming up. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what was it like? I mean, how were the people there, like in, in, in your community? Were, were people friendly? Uh, was, there, was it like a big, happy family? Or, or, or Take us there. What was, what was it like? Yeah, well, uh, pretty much so. It seemed like everybody was family orientated, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I'm... Um, uh, Everybody know everybody, right. you know. If you need something, you know who to go to, you know, and they come to you and they exchange whatever needs to be done. Mm -hmm. It was a great thing and it was, the island was almost built upon the spirituality. Okay. So we know a lot of things about that. Mm -hmm. And so we was very happy when we go to school. School didn't have no, no light, no bathroom, outhouse and all that stuff like that. But we were happy people, mm -hmm. very happy. Right. Had no problem. You had to walk to school backward and forward, okay. you know? It would take you about 20, 25 minutes to walk to school. Okay. Yeah. Now, as a little boy, what did you do for fun? As a little boy, I used to go hunting with rocks. Is that right? We didn't have no guns or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. So the, we had to learn how to use rocks. And when I see a bird or a guana, they call it, if the guana see me first, I'm in trouble. I got to start running. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, but, but if I creep up on the guana and the guana don't see me first, then I, I'll take care of the guana with the rock, okay. not the uh, guana in the head. I don't always be successful, but I did. Mm -hmm. Then we, we'll go hunting birds, pigeons, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. you know. And we and go fishing. It's a lot of fishing. That's one of our main diet uh, there on the island. Mm -hmm. uh, um, all different kind of seafood that uh, we we indulge in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, did you play any type of games or anything like that, or play ball or anything like that when you were little? The only game that I remember playing is uh, baseball with a softball. Is that right? And they, w w the way they out you, they have to hit you with the ball. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. hit you with the ball and you out. Yeah, something like that. Okay, but uh, that's the only sport that uh, I remember uh, doing when I was coming up. Okay. Yeah, you know, fishing, sport, uh, baseball, sport, mm -hmm. and of course, other gymnastics, running, and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, when you first started school, uh, what was that experience like for you, being in a classroom with other kids and? Uh, learning and books. Uh, did, did, did you did you uh, did you like that 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 situation or how was that for you? Well, when I first started, the the environment was a little bit different because a lot of the kids we had the north and we had the south people, and I didn't know everybody. Mm -hmm. I just know the people from the north side. Okay. And uh, the people from the south side, I didn't know them that well. So it it, it kind of take a lot of time for me to get myself in balance and we had one school teacher and then when you get to the seventh grade when you get to the seventh grade 
then you got to go back and teach the other kid who's under you. Is that right? And we used to call them monitors. Mm -hmm. That's what we used to call the, uh, the, the teachers. And if you cannot teach the grade two, grade three, grade four, then they'll, they'll put you back, mm -hmm. you see. Yeah. But so, so that's the way it was. Yeah. Yeah, well, one school teacher, and we call him the school master. Yeah. Now, how did you like being a monitor? Did you did you like that? Oh, I liked uh, uh, I liked the monitors. The monitors was nice. They yeah. was very nice ladies and and gentlemen. It was more ladies than it was uh, gentlemen mm -hmm. uh, being monitors. Yeah. Yeah, I liked that. And they take you by the hand, so to speak, and really guide you through things, make you feel like you, as a person, need to be there and right. be a part of. Yeah. And I grew grew up with that, and we always call them. Mr. or Miss. Okay. In school. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we weren't allowed to call them by their first name. Right, right. Real respectful. Kind of, yes. We yeah. had to address them by their last name. Right, right. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. that's pretty similar to the way, the way it was when, when I was growing up here. Now, let me ask you this. Did, was there like a music class there, or was there a, a, a school band, or any type of musical thing going on? No, we didn't have no school band. Okay. No musical, no musical equipment. The only musical equipment I see is when we go to the society hall uh -huh. and we are uh, going to celebrate a holiday. And everything was uh, used with um, instrument, wind instrument, you know, and uh, saw, scrub board, and all that stuff like that because we didn't have no electricity. So all the instrument had to be uh, without um, prepared um, those kind of instruments would have to be wind instrument. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, so I, I, we danced to that all night long, and uh, the next day, then we go on back to our normal life okay. for that holiday. Yeah. But you didn't get to see that too often. Mm -hmm. And then I was a young boy, you know. There, we didn't have no limitation about going to the bar or going to buy something because my, my parents didn't drink or nothing like that. Okay. But if I wanted to go to the store to where they sell liquor and stuff like that, you could have do so. Mm -hmm. But yet still we didn't, the young people still yet didn't indulge in it. Right. Because right. that was a no-no for the young people. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. right, right. That's well, it. look here. Well, we're going to take a quick, uh, a small break here. But when we come back, could you tell us a little bit more about, about the celebration and, 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 and the different type of dances and that, 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 you, that you did? Mm -hmm. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back <laughs> with the one and only <laughs> Chef Alfredo, <laughs> up close and personal. those of you just joining us, uh, my name is Timmy Willis, and we're here with the internationally known uh, Chef Alfredo. Uh, Chef, we were talking about uh, uh, the, the celebrations that you had uh, uh, back when you, were, when you were growing up in your hometown, uh, and some of the dances that you, that you used to do. Could you tell us a little bit about them? Yes. Um, we had, it's, it's a pole, and they have different rhythm. Um, and it looked like a rainbow, mm -hmm. and you dance to soca, calypso, mambo, and all those uh, type of dances. Mm -hmm. And we really do the celebration, and you just dance and dance and dance. Did you, you like? Did, did, did you like the day? Oh yeah, I, uh, well, because it didn't happen that often. Yeah. But when it did happen, I enjoyed it. 
right. all the way around. Right, yeah, right. Uh, and, and um, uh, I remember that up to today. Mm -hmm. You know, every time I go back there, I don't hear that kind of music like we used to. Really? No, you don't hear that because of the time has changed. Okay. And the more the more modern lies now than we was when I was coming up. Yeah, that's just yeah, like yeah. here. I mean, I don't hear the temptations <laughs> anymore either, you know, so I know what you mean. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, what about the clothes? Um, uh, what, type of, what type of clothes did you wear? Um, well, um, we had um, uh, some people with seamstra, and back in those days, they used to have a 100-pound bag of flour, mm -hmm. and they have big writing on it. And what the, uh, the women will do, they'll take that, that uh, flower bag, take it to the water, and beat it with a wood, and take out all of that uh, um, uh, steam out of it, and, and turn it white with salt water, mm -hmm. you know, because we right there with the salt water. And then they would bring it back, put it on the, on the line, and let the sun bleach it. Okay. Because we didn't have no, no bleach and nothing like that, mm -hmm. and that's the way they do things. And they make you a shirt, make you a short pair of pants, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so then after a while, my mother used to go to the Nassau and uh, buy other clothing, because we was under the British jurisdiction at that time. Oh, okay. We did not have our independence mm -hmm. at that time, so yeah. we were still at, under the British law. That's why they used to call us BWI. Uh, the, the, what, was, what did that stand for? British British West Indies. Is that right? Yeah, they, had, uh, they used to call it BWI. No, what, what was that like, though? I mean, was the how did they treat you? Well, they treat us because all of my people was the same there, uh -huh. all of them. Very seldom we see another ethnic. Very seldom, mm -hmm. and then it, it was I wasn't affiliated with that, but it was my own kind of people. We did everything together. We go to church. We go to school. Right. Uh, we play ball. You know, we go sw um, swimming, uh, trying to teach, um, beat each other, see who can swim better than the other, <laughs> and who can dive and mm -hmm. stay under the water long enough. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Did you do? Did you do diving? And you did that too. Oh yes. I remember when I leave Andros and went to Nassau. And I see the, these fellas was diving for money off the ship and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a great idea, but I didn't know how to do it because I never dived for money before. But I indulge in it, and the money just goes down in the water and keep going like this and going like that. And I didn't know how to do that, and I couldn't hold my breath any longer, and I don't get the money. Oh, okay. But <laughs> nobody <laughs> teach me what to do. Mm -hmm. But I learned fast when I got there they started to tell you, well, when you dive, you get the money, you put the money in your mouth. Okay. And you just hold the money in your mouth until you come up up to the boat. When you come up the boat, you spit the money on out. Okay. Yeah, well, that was a, quite yeah. an experience there, uh -huh. you know. Because when I leave Andros, my mother didn't want me to leave, and I didn't try to tell her that. We had a boat there called the Miss Holland that carried Pugwood from, uh. Uh, from Andros. To Nassau. Now wait a yeah. minute, wait a minute. Now you said you tried to leave, but you you wasn't going to tell your mom. N no. How old were you then? I was fourteen years. Fourteen old. years old. Yeah, but well, I was a big boy. Well, what made you want to leave and go to Nassau? Well, it somehow I didn't. Uh, somehow I feel like uh, the island wasn't big enough for me. Okay. I need to get out and uh, see the world, mm -hmm. what it has to offer. Right. So I I didn't tell my mama nothing. I just leave with one. One suit of clothing, that was my wardrobe. Mm -hmm. So when I got in Nassau, when I got in Nassau, then she sent my older brother, because she missed me, and she sent my older brother for me. Mm -hmm. Then when I look up, who do I see? My brother Henderson. Mm -hmm. He said, you know why I'm here, don't you? I said, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew why. You knew why <laughs> you <was there. laughs> I said, no, I don't. He said, well, I'm going to tell you. Mother, send, send me to get you and the boat leave tomorrow, and you got to be on that boat. And so I didn't want my brother to beat me up, because I know how he is. He was very short of patience. Mm -hmm. He was older than I am. But anyway, the following day, I caught the boat and went back 
two Andros yes. with him. Okay. And I can see my mom right now, as I speak to you, rejoicing to see me come back home, mm -hmm. you know? But I didn't stay home too long. Six months later, I was gone again, mm -hmm. and I never returned. Okay. She didn't see me no more for, th for three years, uh -huh. you see? Because I got up from that environment where my brother think that I will hang out. I went on someplace else, a place called Fox Hill in Nassau. Mm -hmm. And which you know, this place was called the monastery. Now, it is the monastery. So I went there to the monastery, but I, was, I wasn't old enough to go to school there. I had to go to a, a, another school called St. Anselm. Okay. So I stayed there to, to the monastery till I get about 19 years old. So what, what was that like then when you, when you first got there? Uh, did you know anyone? Not really. No? I know of, I have some cousin in Nassau. Where they live at, I didn't have no idea because I didn't know Nassau was like it was. It was a whole different world, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> coming from Andros and coming from Andros and going into the capital was a whole different world, cars running, yeah. you know, bicycle riding mm -hmm. and all that stuff like that. But I want to go back to Andros well, as far as transportation concerned, it is that we, if you had a bicycle, you have something, mm -hmm. you know, because that bicycle can take you where you want. And any way you want to go in Andros, you had to walk. Mm -hmm. If you got to go eight or nine miles, you have to leave early in the morning, but around six o'clock in the morning before the sun come up. Because mm -hmm. when the sun come up, it'll be so hot, you have to sit down and take a breather. Okay. I had to to tell you that 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 part did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because uh, it, that's what's very important at that time, mm -hmm. you know. And we got a thing called uh, uh, a certain time a year in Andros, we go and catch crabs. Okay. At night, and you uh, get kerosene, put it on a stick, and that's the how you see where you're going. Now, how do you catch the crab, though? I mean, you don't use a fishing pole, do you? No, no, no. You catch them by hand. Is that right? Yeah. yeah well, you know, it's the way you catch them from the back because mm -hmm. they got big bites and stuff like that. Now, sometimes you get bite. Mm -hmm. you know, what we, we call the man crab. <laughs> <laughs> so they had two different kind of crabs. They had black crab and they had a white crab. The black crab was swarm one part of the year and the white crab was swarm one part of the year. Mm -hmm. But we eat a lot of crabs. Yeah. But it was land crab, not sea crab. So is there a, a difference? I don't know the difference. Well, I mean, the is there difference a difference in taste? The difference in, uh, in taste. The, 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 uh, the white crab was more meatier than the black crab. Oh, okay. But the black crab was more fatter, had more fat. Yeah. You know, and we boiled them, boiled them on the fire when you're cooking breads and all that stuff like that, because mm -hmm. we don't have no oven or anything like that, yeah. is um, we had to go for wood. And we had some called a fire hire, where they had two rods, and you build it up with wood. And uh, when the bread get brown on the bottom, then you cover the bread, and then you put the wood on top of the, on top of the, the, the pot. Okay. So you can brown on top. Yeah. Yes. Very. Inter it was very interesting back in those days. There was mm -hmm. no no pollution, no nothing like that. Mm -hmm. We were, we were strong because we walk everywhere we go, and we was in good sh we were in good shape. Mm -hmm. Doctors, I never seen a doctor till I get about nineteen years old. Okay. Okay. Yes. Now, when you first when you first uh, got to Nassau. Yes. Um, I mean, did you do any partying? Did you did you go out to it? Did you do any dancing or, or or did you get involved in any any or, or was there anything like that to do? Yes, it was. But uh, I, I would say to you, I don't think that was one of my interests. My interest was trying to find a place for me to stay. Okay. And uh, and everything like that because I didn't know anybody mm -hmm. and, so, and so what have you. But I heard of these places. They got a place called the Silver Slipper. They had a place called the Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. And they had a place called um, Freddie Money. Some, some, yeah, Freddie Money. Mm -hmm. But there's some nice places you can pass, pass there. You can hear the music playing. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I was too young to, to go in there. Mm -hmm. So I just bypass it. But I see people be, you know, the way they had it built, 
you could see people dancing and have a good time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. You, now, you did find a place to stay. Yes. And when we come back, uh, w would you tell us about that? Oh, yes. I certainly okay. will. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, right here with Chef Alfredo, up close and personal. We'll be right back. We're here with the internationally known Chef Alfredo. Uh, we were talking about when you uh, when you uh, was looking for a place to stay. Uh, obviously, you did find a, a place to stay. Uh, how did that all come about? What was that experience like for you? Well, as I was uh, hanging out on the dock, they call it, uh, I run into a cousin that I known down in Andros, but they moved from uh, Andros and went to live in Nassau. Mm -hmm. And so her, that name was Charlotte, Charlotte Martin, which was my, my auntie da daughter. And uh, she said, what you doing up here? I said, well, I came to Nassau to, to, to check it out, to see what's going on. She said, do, uh, do auntie know you up here? I said, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said, oh, he's talking about your mom? Yes, my mom. <laughs> she uh -huh. called my mom auntie. That's okay. her auntie. Uh -huh. Yes. And um, she said, where are you staying at? I said, well, I don't have a place to stay yet. He said, are you kidding me? I said, no, I'm not. He said, well, then you can come on and stay with us, with, with me, and my, and, mm -hmm. my, and me and my daughter. I said, well, I like that. So mm -hmm. I stayed there with them for a minute. Mm -hmm. But on, on during the weekdays, everything was beautiful, no problem. But man, when the weekend come, they get drunk and start arguing and fussing. <laughs> and I said, this is no place for me to be. Mm -hmm. So I stayed there, but for a couple of months after that, I. That's when I left there and went on to the monastery. Uh -huh. Yeah, because uh, they was they was too rough for me. Yeah. When when they get drunk and they they drink this stuff called standard. Okay. There was a liquor called standard. Get they would get drunk because it then had no proof. Okay. You know the yeah. proof was unknown. Wow. Yeah. It was that strong. <laughs> oh, yes, it was. <laughs> but I have to tell you this little story, also, <coughs> in Nassau. I learned a lot of things about Nassau in general. It was a whole different life, you know. Then I got a job in Nassau uh, working for a grocery store and delivering food on a bicycle. And you have, <laughs> and you have one of these the crate on the front of and uh, on the front of the bicycle mm -hmm. as you deliver these food to these people. But anyway, I didn't w wasn't used to in and out of cars and things like that. And this particular day I was riding the bicycle going to live some and got in an accident and I got knocked up in the into the bank Whoa. door. Wow. And got knocked out. And he didn't know anything. And I wind up in the hospital. Mm. <laughs> but when I come through when I come to and I find I was in the hospital, I said, Wait, well, where am I? I say, You're in the hospital? I said, where is my clothes? <laughs> yeah, because they took over my, my clothes and give me that gown. Right. So, so what happened there, after she left, I put my clothes on and I walked out. <laughs> 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 I walked out, out, out of the hospital because I didn't understand hospital. Because I, I, I read about hospital, right. but I never had no experience that with hospital. That was your first time being My first one. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I walked, out, I walked out of that hospital. But when I got out to the fresh air, then I was dizzy. So I sit down, got my composure back together and all that stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Then I got up and I walk, walk on down to, to in the market square, they call it, down there where the straw market and everything was going on mm -hmm. and where the boys then be playing 
Congos and all that stuff like that. Mm -hmm. People dancing on the waterfront and the boys diving for money and all that stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it was very interesting to me. It was a great experience, and that gave me an understanding. This is the place I wanted to be. Yeah, I wanted to be. So I stayed in Nassau for quite a while. The second time around, mm -hmm. and after that, after that, then I went and I was with 19, 18 then, and then um, uh, I joined the ship SS Nassau cruise ship. Okay. Cruising okay. So before we go there, <laughs> okay. Now y y y you had a little a little accident on your bike. Yes. And you ended up in the hospital. Yes. Now, did you ever get back to back back with your bike? What happened to no. your bike? No. No. Uh, I you don't didn't get that job back again. <laughs> no. I didn't even go bother myself and going back there, get an accident, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, you was done with the bike. Thing. Yeah, I was done with. I didn't know what happened to the bike. Yeah. I'm, I'm quite sure the bike was all towed up oh, okay. because a car hit me. Yeah, but I never seen the bike no more. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did, 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 did you uh, did you did you work anywhere else or or, or, or what did you do after uh, that? Well, after that, that's when I hang, went in and hang out on the dock. Okay. After school, um, uh, I go and hang out on the dock, and I was a shoe shine boy. Is that right? But that wasn't my, that wasn't the reason why I was a, uh, a shoe shine boy. I wanted to get to know the captain clean the captain's shoes mm -hmm. and the mate's shoes and all that stuff like that. So they liked it me and they let me come on the board when the ship is in the, in, in port mm -hmm. and take my shoe shine box with me and clean the shoes. Yeah. Yeah, and then he said, when I come back, you get your passport and this together and I'm going to give you a job. But then he did. Mm -hmm. when, he, when he went out for a couple of weeks, he come back, same thing. He said, you ready to, to, to work on the ship? I said, yes, sir. I'm ready to work on the ship, and he gave me a job. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now, before we get on this ship, mm -hmm. I just want to ask you one question. When you were talking about the guys that were diving for the money, yes. How did the money get down in there? What, did people throw the money in there? Yes, the tourists. The tourists would throw it in the, there. The tourists liked to see them dive off the ship yeah. and uh, everything like that, and they would throw the money in the water. Oh, was that a long, long dive? Yeah. Oh yes, yeah, pretty, pretty well, far. Because the, those those boys were professional. They was five deckers, ship five uh -huh. deckers, and some of those boys, those pros, they used to dive on top deck. Wow! Did you ever try that? No, 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 no. Try that one. No, no, no. <laughs> I leave that alone. <laughs> I wasn't that good. Okay. I mean, I could swim good. I can dive good on a low level, but that kind of distance that wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. No, I just watching. And learn from there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you you, you mentioned the monastery. Yes. Um, well, you, you didn't talk much about it. I mean, what was that like? Well, the monastery have disciplined me. Have made me more of the person I am today. Okay. There was no foolishness in the monastery. Mm -hmm. Everything was big business, and I used to go to the church four times a day, three times, four times a day, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Breakfast, you go to church. Lunch, you go to church. Dinner, you go to church. Then you go and you study. But you go to the statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary statue every time you go to eat. And you pray, and then you go into the dining room and eat. But I couldn't live in the monastery. They gave me another place in the monastery, but I didn't live with the brothers and the, and the priests. Mm -hmm. I live in a place all by myself. And my job at uh, the monastery, uh, of course I, I work, my job at the monastery is to milk goat. Okay. Milk the goat in the morning time, get up five o'clock in the morning, go in the cold, cold room and milk the goat because that's all the milk that the priests of them used to drink, mm -hmm. goat milk. Okay. It, it was, an, it was an, a very interesting situation there for me all the way around. But it, 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 it allowed me to learn what life was all about. Mm -hmm. And while I was in the monastery, they had a chef there. His name was um, Mr. Ferguson. And I liked the way Mr. Fer I was a dishwasher helping him out. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Ferguson asked me, he said, you want to learn how to be a, a good cook? I said, yeah, I, I, I would, Mr. Ferguson. He said, well, I tell you what. I'm going to teach you. 
Mm. And he teach me. He was a great, one of the greatest chefs that I ever met in my life. And I met a lot of them over the years. Mm -hmm. But he taught me everything to start me out as uh, what I want to do. Okay, yeah. so that's how you got interested in, 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 yes. in, in cooking. Yes. Right? Oh, oh, yes, that's how I got interested yeah. in cooking from uh, Mr. Ferguson in the monastery. Yeah. He was a great chef, yeah. great. Because, you know, the, the, the priest them eat nothing else but gourmet. Mm -hmm. Gourmet food, right? The best money can buy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. And I learned that from them, uh, how they eat and stuff like that. And I start to incorporate all of that that I learned from them as I grow. Yeah. yeah. It, it, you sound like it was a very enjoyable experience. For oh you. yes. Oh yes. I love the life I live and I live the life I love. Mm -hmm. It was very, was, 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 was very inviting. Mm -hmm. And the priestess them. They teach you a lot of good things, and they, and you see how they conduct themselves, and so what have you. But everybody had the had a, had their duty and their job in the monastery. Everybody did something, mm -hmm. you know. Right. Somebody work in the garden, no women around, or anything like that to work in the garden. Some is uh, work in the honey, and the honey, honey, and m get the honey. Uh, what do you call that again? It, 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 it was a beehive, wasn't it? Beehive, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, the brother Ephraim, he used to take care of the beehive. Mm -hmm. But uh, everybody had something to do. Something and to if do. you want to be a mason, they used to make uh, um, blocks and stuff down there in the monastery. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a mason or a carpenter or stuff like that, you can learn all of those things in the monastery because some of those uh, priests and brothers of them had a profession. Okay. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. So, but I want to learn. Uh, I want to learn cooking, because yeah. I say if I learn cooking, I never go hungry again. <laughs> Smart man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now look here. When we come back. Yes. Now you, you got on the, the the captain got you a job on the ship. Yes. Okay. So you gonna tell us about that? Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. We'll be right back yeah. with Chef Alfredo, <laughs> up close and personal. <laughs> Uh, we're sitting here with uh, internationally known uh, Chef Alfredo. Uh, you were talking about uh, you had gotten a, a job on the ship. Uh, could you tell us what was that whole experience like for you? Well, I tell you, I went in as a switchboard operator. Mm -hmm. Didn't know anything about switchboard operating. 
but they have somebody there who teach me how to the ins and out. And the first place that I went was Havana, Cuba. First place. Mm -hmm. Because that's not when Castro was the, uh, the premier, that's when Batista was there. So Cuba was wide open. I mean, uh, I've seen some great things in Cuba, and you want to buy anything in Cuba, it was beautiful stuff. Mm -hmm. Good leather, good clothing, mm -hmm. and everything like that. I liked the Cuba, a lot of, uh, you know, and they had a lot to offer. I seen some nice shows in, in, in Cuba uh -huh. and all that oh, stuff. Oh, what type right? of shows? Oh, um, dancing shows, mm -hmm. uh, nude shows. So was there any like, like music, like musician bands? Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, they, they played a lot of uh, percussion. Mm -hmm. A lot of congos and tambali yeah. and all that stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, acoustic guitar and all that stuff like that. But they, they had nice, they had nice music. Mm -hmm. That's, the, you know, that Spanish music and stuff like that. It sounds so good. And when we come to the dock uh, with the ship, they have a band welcome, uh, welcoming the, oh the yeah? tourists. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they was doing everything in Spanish, but it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, all those percussions and stuff like that. Right. And they did some of the, some of the best, mm -hmm. you know. You know, but um, Cuba, after we leave Cuba, then we go on a two day, two, two weeks cruise. We cruise Haiti, uh, Port au Prince, Haiti. I was there mm -hmm. three or four times. Yeah, well, what's it like there? I mean, well, in Haiti, in the, at that time, I noticed there in Haiti is that uh, if you got a watch, and the people there was very creative in artwork and c doing beautiful carving and stuff like that. And you could buy the carving exchange because they see something like you got a light or watch because they like they never seen these things before, which and I uh, uh, that mm -hmm. was one experience. Mm -hmm. But you know. In Haiti, everybody was so together at that time, you know. Then we had to go up in the mountain and get uh, some more view of Haiti, you know, because Haiti got a lot of mountains okay. in there. Now, well, how did you get up there? The, the, uh, we went in a uh, they had a cab. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah okay. They, uh, oh, yeah. They had a cab. Uh, I mean, uh, your heart be pumping because it's so near and they don't have no... A uh, wall or nothing mm -hmm. going around those curb, mm -hmm. and they they drive pretty fast mm -hmm. up here. But I guess they didn't know what they're doing. They're used to it. Uh, right? Yeah, but uh, but I like Haiti. I didn't I didn't do any entertaining in Haiti, you know, because I was I did they speak patois, you know, that broken French and stuff like that, oh, and I didn't okay. get into that. No, let me ask you this. Uh, in, during your travels, did, did, did you uh, taste any of the food or you just pretty much ate the food from the ship? There, Haiti, yes. Uh, that's eat the food from the ship because I, I, I seen some of uh, the Haitian uh, cuisine that the food that I didn't look, look like the way it looked. Okay. So I didn't bother myself to indulge in it. Mm -hmm. But when I get to uh, the next port, we stop at uh, the Dominican Republic. Which in where there's a Spanish, there's a Spanish country, mm -hmm. man. I mean the party start. Is that right? I mean the party starts. Time we get off the ship, when we get off the ship and go to shore, all those bars and Santo Domingo and all that stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to have been in no, no certain age. And then at that time I was a pretty good dancer. Okay. Oh, I dance. Oh. <laughs> I dance. <laughs> I dance. I dance a lot when I was in San Domingo because I like. I like the Cuban jazz and uh, mm -hmm. uh, the mambo and the samba and all of that stuff like yeah. that. Oh, Pretty yeah. exciting, huh? Oh, oh yes, <laughs> it certainly was. <laughs> but uh, the American Republic uh, teach me a lot with partying. Those people was always seemed like they're having a great time. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't no poverty in uh, uh, Santo Domingo at all. Mm -hmm. Everybody was having a great time for what I seen. Right. So after after we left that port. Then we went on to, to Jamaica, went on to Kingston, Jamaica, whole different, whole different setting. <coughs> well, you know what? Uh, I, 
I've heard some things about Jamaica, but see, you've been there. I've never been there. So okay. But when we come back, okay. uh, could, you, could you tell us about the uh, yeah. case in Jamaica? <laughs> yes, I will. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be right back with internationally known <laughs> Chef Alfredo, up close and personal. <laughs> Alfredo, and this is my assistant, Angel, and we are here today to demonstrate to you and do a little face, taste factor with uh, some island curry shrimp. And we're going to do it from scratch for you so you can see what's going on, and we're going to have a taste factor after we finish cooking it. So, we ready to start? Sorry, yeah. yeah. Right. And a whole onion. Right. And a small dice. Okay. And add that into your scale. No, don't put all that in there. That's fine. Right. That's good. And give me some. That's good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Give me that side. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we put some uh, thyme leaf in there. Flavor. And I'd let this uh, saute for about three or four minutes until the vegetables get uh, limber. And then I'll add the shrimp uh, to it. And then I'll cook the shrimp until the shrimp turn pink. And once it turns pink, then I'll put the seasoning in there. This is our seasoning we have to, to give it the flavor to, that it needs, that Caribbean flavor. Okay. Yes, this is a meal that you can cook at home. Take it about another 10 or 15 minutes to put it all together. Or something you can try to cook the rice before, well, before, after you, before you go to work. Then when you come home, you just have to heat it up and cut up your vegetable for, in order to get this done. So I keep turning this because I don't want it to burn. You know, we don't want it to burn at all. We want it to just cook slowly. And we'll be ready to put the shrimp in now. Now, what type of shrimp are we using? Uh, are we using that uh, uh, 25, 2530? That's the kind of shrimp we are using, uh, Angel. Mm -hmm. So, we let that stay in there for couple of minutes on one side and then we we'll flip it and we'll keep on going get this all done for you now now if you want this spicy I can make it spicy or I can make it mild this will be up to you the person who uh, requests this uh, dish if you want it spicy or mild I can make it any way you want okay now if you notice <clears throat> that the shrimp start to turn pink as soon as it gets hot. Now, we don't want to cook the shrimp too, too long because if the shrimp be cooked too long, then they become tough. We want the, right, we want the shrimp where it will be nice and tender. Okay? See? So, so with that in mind, we just I'll wait a couple of more minutes to get this all done promptly. You know? So when, when you sit down to eat this meal, you will enjoy it because of the time we put into it to make it right for you, okay? <clears throat> there we go. Now, uh, uh, yes, okay. And uh, this is our boiled rice. Yeah. What you think of this? Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. And uh, Angel is dishing up the, the, the boiled rice to go with this, uh, to this dish. And now, I give me the curry. 
Now since the shrimp is almost cooked done, now I'm gonna put the curry powder in there to give it that Indian, Indian kind of a flavor. Curry powder. This is uh, what it looked like when we add the curry powder to it. Yeah. That's more of a yellow, a yellow texture. Uh, you like that texture? Mm -hmm. Yes. Very good. Yes. We keep on uh, taking it uh, in a spoon. Alrighty, this meal is ready to go. I mean, it's appetizing. Hmm? Yeah. We'll put it on there like this. Okay. Alright. So. Oh, that's a lot of awesome. Okay. Now, what we want to do here. Some people spice. doesn't like oh yes the spice. Thank you. All right, we spice it up just a little bit. We don't want to spice it too much. And give me that wine. Okay. Put a little chibli wine. Yeah. Okay. I'll cut this off here. Thank you. <laughs> okay, give me one more dish. Okay, that's that dish. That's that uh, island curry shrimp over some boiled rice on the mild side. Now, we have one. For those of you just joining us, you are missing it. We're here with internationally known Chef Alfredo. So get out the kitchen, get grandma, y'all get around the TV because he's going he's gonna to demonstrate some, uh, some very, very delicious dishes later on so you don't want to miss that so chef alfredo we were talking about kingston <laughs> jamaica yes now would you tell us what, what was that experience like for uh you? kingston jamaica every time i think of kingston jamaica i remember a place called hanover street mm -hmm. and that's where all the crews um, of the ship goes to party with all the girls and stuff like that but the thing, the most thing that I remember in Kingston, Jamaica, they was having coordination. And I never seen so many beautiful floats and ladies and women and stuff like that in, in Kingston, Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even with my mouth gap open, you know? Because yeah. it was so surprising and they was dancing on these floats and having a good time. Mm -hmm. And uh, then doing those calypso in uh, Soka and all that stuff like that uh, in Jamaica, in Kingston, Jamaica, that is. Mm -hmm. So I didn't spend a lot of time in Jamaica. Uh, each time I went in Jamaica, the four times I went to Kingston, 
I stayed ashore but four or five hours because the ship was moving into another part of Jamaica, mm -hmm. which is called Port Antonio. Okay. That's another part. Now there, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, and there in uh, Port Antonio was a whole different uh, thing and uh, experience in uh, Port Antonio. Now that was wide open. Can have great time, great food, great entertainment, and all that stuff. People doing the limbo mm -hmm. and going under the sticks and all that stuff like that. Uh, Port Antonio is a yeah. place I really enjoy. And I didn't used to, I didn't wasn't drinking at that time, but they had this beer in Jamaica called Red Stripe. Mm -hmm. So it looks so good. I tell you, I better try it. So I tried one ball of Red Stripe, and. Uh, I didn't like the taste of it because it tastes dingy, you know, like f uh, made from di dingy water or something like that. But uh, the friends who would, I was with, they was indulging and having a great time, you know. A lot of women dancing. Yeah. I, well, I, did, I did a lot of dancing. Okay. Oh yes, I did. Now, what about the food? Did you did you try any of the food oh, there? Oh yes, Jamaican food. Yes, mm -hmm. I did. Um, we did some curry chicken. We did uh, some. Eshawi, which in his red snapper mm -hmm. and, and peas, <coughs> excuse, and peas and rice, or bean and rice, uh, that, that is. Uh, the food was excellent. Good flavor, mm -hmm. good consistency. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. I, I tell you, uh, but I find one thing in Jamaica the man didn't do that much cooking, the women did most of the cooking in Jamaica. That's what I learned. Mm -hmm. And I, when uh, I see some of the fellas over this way from Jamaica, and I see they're in restaurant, I know they get it from those those ladies. Right. They're right. great cooks. Yeah. See, because back in those days, most men had to go to sea and harvest uh, sponge, crawfish, lobster, mm -hmm. and all that um, stuff like that. So the women stay at home and cook for the family. Mm -hmm. And they're some of the greatest cooks that I have ever known besides Mr. Ferguson. Yeah. But the flavor, the, the flavor was excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I, that's the kind of food I enjoy today for myself with good flavor. Okay. Uh, look good and taste good. Right. Yeah, and that's what the Jamaican did. And then they did it, did it this curry oxtail and curry goat. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that stuff. Good stuff. Or oh, with some steamed rice. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And um so we stayed there for in Port Antonio for a day, and then we left Port Antonio from there, and then we started to sail back to America. Mm -hmm. So we go sail from Port Antonio back to Miami, Florida, uh, which in was my first time in my in in United States. Is that right? Yes, first time in United States. Well, what was that experience like uh, for you? It was a whole different world. Yeah. It was a whole different world. You wouldn't believe what it was like uh, experience the first time coming into the United States. Mm -hmm. It was something else that I that I never forget. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but uh, it was a whole different uh, experience. You know, you see the police here, you see uh, the immigration. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then you had to take off the uh, uh, the the custom. I mean, the the tourists. You had to take them off, the passengers rather, mm -hmm. on the gangplank, take the luggage off, take it to the immigration, immigration open up, and sight you see if they bring anything they ain't supposed to bring. Right. Yeah, right. you know. Now, I, what year What year around was this? Do you can remember? It was in the 50s. This was in the 50s? Yes, in the 50, yeah. I want to say 57, 58. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, 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 that's what was around that time. Because when I went to the, on that ship, the first time I was, I was 17 and a half years old, mm -hmm. and I stayed there but uh, two years. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that was a that was a great experience, uh -huh. you know. And then they let us off in Miami, and I went wild in Miami because there uh, was so much to do. Mm -hmm. It was unlimited, what you can do, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I um, I wasn't used to. I want to go to the nightclub, but I couldn't go to the nightclub because I heard you. They have age. You can't go in those clubs right. uh, unless you're 21 at that 
21 at that time. Mm -hmm. But I was tall. I looked like 21, but yeah. I wasn't. Right. So this one club in, on, in Miami, on, um, in St. John, St. John Hotel on uh, Second Avenue, well, I went and had me a felt hat, dark glasses and everything like that. And I went inside. And the man said, didn't I, you came out here the other day? I said, no, man, I've never been here before. <laughs> he said, I remember you. He said, you can't come in here. You're underage. <laughs> <laughs> didn't work, did it? <laughs> no, it didn't work. <laughs> because he remembered me because mm -hmm. we, we stayed in Miami but for two weeks mm -hmm. while the ship, whatever they had to do to the ship and so what have you. But the ship still it was uh, my resident. Right. At that time, right now, yeah. no, no, no. So, so the ship at at, at, one, at some point, it's the ship left Miami, yeah, and went back, huh? and, and 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 went back to went back to the Bahamas. Okay, the so, Nassau, that is. So, so when did you when did you officially move to uh, to this country? Um, officially moved. Was for, that many for, years later? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say back in fifty nine. Okay. But a couple of years after that, back in fifty nine, uh, July the twentieth. Yeah. I, I landed in um, uh, for a lot of days. So what made you wanted to, to, to move to this country? Well, I was always adventure. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see the world more so and with my own country. So I wanted to see what the world had for me. So that's when I made up my mind, I'm coming to the United States. But what happened, and in order for me to do so, uh, I was a captain of a sightseeing boat in Nassau, mm. excuse me, a sightseeing boat where you could ride on the boat and you can see the fish on, on oh, the bottom. Oh, yeah, the glass bottom the boat. Glass yeah. bottom boat, yes. And I took these two people to Paradise Island and they tell me that uh, come back and pick us up at um, four o'clock. So I went back and picked them up at four o'clock. I, I don't know nothing to these people, but anyway, make a long story short, as we was coming back to Nassau, they said to me, the lady said to me, Miss Tarvis, she said, you know me, my husband really like you. And we was wondering, would you like to go to the United States and be a chauffeur and butler? Oh, wow. <laughs> I said, I said to myself, I said, well, I, I said, I don't think you're serious. She said, yeah, we are serious, we like you, and we like the way, the way you carry yourself. I said, well, thank you very much. She said, but when you get off from work, why don't you come down to the hotel? Mm -hmm. where they were staying at, at the time. So I went home, and uh, my stepmother, that is, at the time, because I was living with my dad at the time, and um, she said, I said to her, I said, these people want to take me to the United States. She said, boy, that's foolishness. These people always talk like that. Mm -hmm. I said, but you don't know that, Ma. I said, let me go and see anyway. So she said, but since you feel that way, then I will press you some clothing so you look nice. So she pressed me some clothing, looked nice, and went down to the hotel, showing sure up. They said, oh. When I got there, we sat, sit down and talk, and said, we really want you to come. And they was from Jacksonville, Florida. Uh -huh. No, I didn't have no clue. But anyway, this is what he said to me. He said, here is $500. $500, man. <laughs> and at that time, we was uh, under the British pound, shilling, and pence, mm -hmm. not dollars pound, shilling, and pen. Mm -hmm. that's, well, that's Great Britain money, right? Okay. But anyway, and he gave me that money, so I want you to go ahead and get, start getting your papers together. And I say, okay, I'll do that. He said, when I get back to the state, I'm gonna send you a round trip of tickets so you could uh, come and see where you're gonna be living at in, in Jacksonville and their house where I was gonna stay at. Mm -hmm. See, they had a place built for me right I, right. didn't, I didn't stay inside of the house, per se, but I was penetrating through there mm -hmm. and, and cooking for them yeah. and drive the, drive the man wherever he wanted to go and then drive the kids to school. Mm -hmm. And that's how I, that's how I came uh, permanent yeah. in the United States, yeah, oh, okay. really. I drove those kids up and everything like that, taking them to school, did all the shopping and all that stuff for them. But they had a maid also, but the maid do what they, she did. I did what I had to do. Yeah. And uh, it, it was a joyful thing. In the summer, in the wintertime, we live in, in uh, Jacksonville. 
in the summertime, we go to a place called Lazy Acre. <laughs> they had a beautiful home down there, mm -hmm. horses, mm -hmm. and that's how I learned how to ride, swimming pool, mm -hmm. and then the lake come right by the house, and he had a speedboat. <laughs> 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 it was a great, it was a great experience. Yeah, it sounds and like then, it. Uh, he had a, a chicken farm there too, mm -hmm. chicken farm. So he said to me one day, uh, no, Mr. Suggs, uh, who was running the chicken farm, somebody didn't show up. So he asked me if I go there and plug the eggs. I tell him I didn't come to, the, to, to, to do no farming. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a chauffeur and butler. Right. He said, well, come on, I'll go down there and do it. And, and then, I, then I thought about it, you know. Here I am. These people giving me all of this freedom and mm -hmm. this nice thing. You know, live like a king, you know, mm -hmm. and everything was there. Right. But anyway, I decided, okay, since you're going down there, I'll go down there and help Mrs. Suggs. So I went in the chicken farm. Did you? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I plugged the chicken. Some of those chickens were very angry, mm -hmm. and they fly up at you, and I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. You know, they get angry with you yeah. when you're taking the eggs because you had to plug the eggs and all that stuff yeah. like that. Well, well, a very memorable th thing for me mm -hmm. down there, learning how to ride horses, hunt with a rifle, and all that stuff like that because ain't no people uh, around because this house was way out there by itself. Right. Yes. Yeah. Now, do you ever, uh, are you ever, uh, ever what, have you ever kept in touch with these people or the, or the kids or, or you, you just lost contact with them? That's a good question. Yes, I do. Good. Because the, gen the, the gentleman, he passed. And back in 72, with a heart attack, mm -hmm. and uh, Miss Towers, she got remarried, and I uh, finally caught up with her, and she and I was conversing with each other, and then one day, she brought all the kids, all, all the children, the four of them, they had mm -hmm. two boys and two girls, they bring them all to her house so they can um, speak with me. Isn't that beautiful? But I didn't get to, I haven't gotten to see them yet, yes. but they, they just love me, and I love them too. Mm -hmm. when, uh, the kids them remember me like it was only yesterday. Yeah, you know, because so uh, every morning they see me driving them, picking them up to school, driving them to school, and all that stuff like mm -hmm. that. You yeah. know, very interesting. Yeah, that's going to be a joyful reunion whenever uh, oh, that takes oh, oh, place. Oh yeah, when it takes place, because I'm looking forward to going there, because she tell me you come on down and you can live right here with us and stay as long as you want. Uh -huh. Or uh, I'm going to love that because you got grandchildren. Uh, and great grand, and I never seen them yet. Okay. But I'm looking forward to the occasion. Yeah. You know, I I would have been there, but I had a a, a situation there uh, when I was going to go there, but my with an accident and so that so I didn't get to go down there. Mm -hmm. But I, that's still in the forecast. Okay, yeah. very good. Now, um, obviously, you 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 landed in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, there's a lot of stuff that happened probably from from Jacksonville to you uh, landing in Pittsburgh. Okay. Um, could you tell us about what was going on in, in, in that time period there? Well, Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know anything about Pittsburgh. Well, the only thing I remember about Pittsburgh was the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Pirates. <laughs> okay. That's all I knew mm -hmm. about Pittsburgh. But how this all came about is that I was uh, dating this lady and she had a daughter living in Pittsburgh and they was opening a restaurant and they was looking for a chef. So they hired me to come to Pittsburgh to uh, be, be the chef to the uh, new restaurant. Mm -hmm. I got up here and the restaurant never came to reality. Oh, wow. And I got stuck in in, in, uh, in uh, Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. stuck. I didn't know nobody. I even didn't know them, really, because mm -hmm. I just know them by meeting them. And I was recommended to come to be the uh, the chef in the restaurant, mm -hmm. and uh, and that never happened. Now, so getting up here in Pittsburgh and everything blew up in my face, and I say to myself, Hey, I'm a I know what kind of man I am. I ain't going to let this bother me. So I said, I'm going to make it anyway because I'm the same person if I was in Florida. But wasn't no need me go back to Florida because I already pulled up my foundation. Then I decided I am going to stay in Pittsburgh and set my goal 
in Pittsburgh in 1976. Mm -hmm. I set my goal in Pittsburgh, but I had the first finals where I was going to have, where can I fit in and be the person I want to be. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't, know, I didn't know nobody, but they say anytime you want to find out anybody, go to a bar. <laughs> yeah, you can find a whole lot of people in there. Yeah, you go. <laughs> All kind of folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, and talking to people and stuff like that, and I got lost in Pittsburgh so many times because one night, it take me almost all night long because the guy who was uh, guiding me uh, to go from Homewood mm -hmm. uh, at that time to uh, Monroeville, and he keep and he was drunk, and he keep telling me go this way, go this way, and I wind up over there on um, uh, uh, the Rankin Bridge, <laughs> and I say this isn't this don't look like uh, mm -hmm. uh, Monroeville. Then he raised his head up and said, man, you got it all wrong. I tell you to go the other way. <laughs> and I, so I didn't argue with him mm -hmm. anyway, but I'll make a long story short. So we finally got back on, on track. So I stayed there with those people in uh, Monroeville for a little while, but I needed a job. Mm -hmm. Needed a job. I couldn't stay idle. Right. Yeah, see? And then, but oh, I had a problem with those people because the man, he was a wife beater and stuff like that, oh, he abused yeah. his wife. Mm -hmm. I felt sorry for her and everything like that, and she go out and work every day, and uh, he come home drunk and everything like that, and he wanted to f beat up everybody, mm -hmm. you know? So I didn't stay there that long. I mean, it was winter time, and uh, when I tell him about what he was doing, he didn't like that, yeah. so he put me out okay. <laughs> in the winter time. Yeah. But I had a car, and I was homeless there for for a, a couple of weeks, because mm -hmm. I didn't have no place to stay. I had to live in my car. Mm -hmm. But I was a strong man, strong-minded. I didn't let none of that pull me down. Right. I still had the person who I am. So I was searching around for a job, and the first job I was looking for that I received in Pittsburgh was in Monroeville at a place called Esther Esther. Mm -hmm. And he said, I, I don't have a job for you to be a chef, you can be the sous chef or the assistant chef to Mr. Earl. I said, it don't matter to me. As long as, I, as long as you give me a job, that's all I want. He said, but I can't pay you a whole lot of money. I said, that's okay. I'll take what you give me because anything beats zero. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, he looked at me, and I call him Papa Nick, mm -hmm. you know. And I worked in Esther, Esther for a while until I get my focus together. Mm -hmm. Once I get my focus together, then I, I left the Esther, Esther, and um, Pittsburgh, after I found out what Pittsburgh had for me, been good for me, because I, uh, I explore Pittsburgh, like I do when I was in Florida, see what it has to offer me. And I find that Pittsburgh had a lot to offer me, and I, and I took it, and I run with it. And I stayed with the Esther, Esther for about two years. Oh, yeah? That's yeah. Great. That was a busy place. Was it? Small, small kitchen, mm -hmm. but it was powerful food coming out of the kitchen. Yeah. We had a great time in, mm -hmm. in, uh, in Esther, Esther, Papa yeah. Nick. I never forget him as long as day I live, but he passed on. Now his two sons, one son, Michael, have Esther, Esther, and they have another place out there on the University Boulevard called uh, Marie's, Marie's, uh, uh, Marie's Restaurant, something like that. Oh, okay. That shopping center. Marie Shopping Center, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, and that's my that's that's my main story, being coming to Pittsburgh. Okay. Yeah, Pittsburgh. You know, yeah. being a man, you can't let situation defeat you. Right. No, no, I didn't believe in that. I never discredit myself. I always look at myself that I'm somebody, and I'm going to stay that way. Don't matter what the situation is, I can't lose me. I got to hold on to me because that's all I got. That's right. Yeah. Well, I know this is a little bit late, but I got to say, welcome to Pittsburgh. Well, I thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you very much. We're happy to have oh, you. Oh, yes. It's yeah. a pleasure to be here. Now, you got involved with music. Yes. Um, you used to manage a, 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 a band, actually. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, um, a managing band started in Florida. Okay. I had a band called Life. Mm -hmm. And I also had a, another band called Black Soul Express, mm -hmm. and I managed them too. Oh, okay. Yes. So 
uh, get them started and everything like that. Then I come, when I come to Pittsburgh, I left them behind. But they were still there playing at different nightclubs and stuff like that. And then when I get up here and got myself situated here in Pittsburgh, then I formed another band called Funky Band and Show. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the first band that I, that I put together mm -hmm. in, in Pittsburgh. Yeah. So we started playing all over the Pittsburgh, Carl's Cork and Kiai, Crazy Quill, mm -hmm. uh, K&S, mm -hmm. and, and uh, 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 the, the Regrado. The Regrado. Yes, yeah. the Regrado mm -hmm. and, and all those places. That's what I've been book. I, I, I did all the booking. Okay. Yeah. So we played all around Pittsburgh and um, in Ohio, mm -hmm. uh, Youngstown, Ohio, a place called Davis Night Club. Mm -hmm. After I was joined, yeah. you start two o'clock in the morning. It started at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you started at two o'clock in yeah. the morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was something else. No. But it was a great experience. Yeah, but there was another band that you uh, you managed too. Yes, wasn't it? the other band that I managed was uh, called Funk City. Funk City. Uh, with the with the Johnson brothers. Oh, that's Melvin Johnson. Uh, Melvin Johnson. Chris Johnson. Yes, and Steve, Steve Johnson. Johnson. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and I Jimmy and Dixon and on Jimmy the Dixon, drums. all of them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the, they uh, was bad, man. Uh, that Funk City was one of the best group I ever put my hand on. Is that right? They could. They they had good choreography on stage. They stepped very well. Mm -hmm. And Melvin, who was the leader, great yeah. guitar player. Yeah. One of the great guitar players I ever seen. But he was in pay. He he didn't have a lot of patience. Yeah. He used to get on Steve all the time. Oh, you're like uh, Joe Jackson. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if Steve, if Steve missed a note, he get it. Uh, he'd be on. He, uh, well, he mightn't say anything to him during the session, but as soon as the session over, we go into the dressing room. Him and Steve get into it, and Steve always obey him. Mm -hmm. You know. He well, that's like because that helped Steve to turn out to be the bass player he is today, though. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Steve, yeah. Steve Johnson is a good bass player. player. Now, Chris was an all-around musician. Mm -hmm. He played trumpet. Mm -hmm. You know, he played guitar. Yeah, and little, then little keyboard. A keyboard. Yeah. And then he's a pretty good drummer, too. Mm -hmm. Steve was a pretty good drummer also. Yeah. Because Steve surprised me. I took him to church one time with me, and uh, and uh, the drummer didn't show up. And Steve went on and he played the drum. Got on the he, drum. He, he, I, yeah. I mean, he really played those drums. He knew all the, uh, the rudiments and everything, mm -hmm. what he wanted to do. Yeah. So. So I, res uh, I have great respect for the Johnson br brothers because they are so talented. Mm -hmm. They should have went to Hollywood 99 times yeah. with the talent they have. I agree with you. You know, and uh, it, it, really, it really troubled me because I spend invest in them to be have better equipment so they can have a better sound. Mm -hmm. But after I did that, same like when the money started coming, everybody started getting of, uh, out of order, yeah. You know, everybody had a complaint, mm -hmm. complaining about this, complaining about that. But what they didn't understand, as far as I'm concerned, if I'm your manager, I'm spending money on you all the time, right? You know, or long back those days, long distance. You know how it was, long distance call. You had to pay a lot of money for mm -hmm. calling over the United States. It ain't like today, right? You know, right. but uh, uh, I did that for a while, you know, and I bought him a van. For them to ride in, so so when we going someplace, we didn't have to rent no van, mm -hmm. and nothing said we get in the van, pack it on up, and who have cars, we drive it in front of the van or behind the van. Mm -hmm. We was like family, right? Yeah, or the, or the Funk City yeah. was a, was one one heck of a group. Yeah. I mean, they had a horn section. They had Floyd King, who's a horn player. Yeah, saxophone. They had Carl King, Carl, who yeah. was a horn player, and they had Gordy Miss. Gordy. He, Gordy Miss, who was a saxophone player also. Mm -hmm. But but Chris was there somewhere. He used to play trumpet mm -hmm. because it was Carl on trombone, Floyd on saxophone, tenor, uh, alto saxophone, and Chris was on trumpet at the time. Mm -hmm. And then Gordy Miss come in somewhere. I don't remember where Gordy Miss come in, but we, we had a heck of a horn section, man. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Good times. Huh? Yes, 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 yes. We used to tear the crazy quilt up. Mm -hmm. And the reflect. Remember the reflection? Oh yeah. Yeah, we played on up the up there a couple of times in the reflection also. Okay. Yeah. 
So mm. well, we, was, we was traveling all over the place. I wanted to send those boys to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. That's where they belong. Yeah. And with the talent they have, I mean, they ain't too old to do so because I feel like now, since that episode with them, I think they are much better than they was back then. Mm -hmm. because they practice, practice, and practice, but they all split up and went their separate ways. Right, 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 yeah. right, right, right. But I can't forget them. Yeah. There's like a part of my life for, for the duration of my life. Right, right. I eat of the can with them. We sleep in the same hotel. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we was like family. Family. Yeah, you, you know, and I, uh, and I loved them. Mm -hmm. Today I still love them like I loved them then. Right. Although they had different opinion about what was going on. Mm -hmm. But I tried to school them. You want to you want to go to the top, this is what you gotta do. You gotta sacrifice. Don't let the money motivate you. Let what you do and motivate you and the money gonna come. There you go. But I couldn't get them to understand that. They want them a couple of dollars as soon as the show is over, mm -hmm. everybody grab around the table and you have to distribute the money. Yeah, but here's the problem with that concept and I tell people all the time, now you got six men Say you make six hundred dollars. Each man get a hundred dollars, but the band is broke. Yeah, right. You see what I mean? Yes, yes. That's yes, not yes. good business. No, no, not at all. Not you at know all. What I mean? So yeah. when you need to put gas in the van, or if you need to get a guitar string, you, you have no money to work with. Exactly. You right. know what I mean? So, yes. uh, but you know, they, that's why they call it the music business. Music business. See, yeah. uh, cats don't understand that. And, they don't and, and understand. And that's why the story goes that yes. way. Yes, you know what I yes, mean? But, uh, yes. But if, if, if they only could take a moment out and understand it from a business perspective, see, because when you know the business from a, everything is a business. Mm -hmm. and, and the band had a business part also, and mm -hmm. that's the part you're speaking of. Right. Uh, buying guitar string, bass string, drum head, and all the uh, trap drum head and all that stuff like that. And I used to have to go in my pocket, like you said, that everybody get their hundred dollars and they do what they want to do, but they f keep forgetting of all the accessory that is needed to make the band mm -hmm. uh, uh, be what it's supposed right. to be. We call that overhead. Overhead, right, <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what we right. call overhead. it. Yeah, Cute. you're right. Yeah, yeah, we call that overhead. Yeah. But look, um, that was, I know I was looking at your face as you was talking about that experience, man. I know that, that's, that's near and dear to your heart. Oh, yeah. But what about now? What, what, what's Chef Alfredo doing now? Well, uh, right now I am uh, uh, in the process of writing a book of my life story. Mm -hmm. And I am working now at a bridge to the go on the north side on East Ohio. Mm -hmm. And I'm a uh, chef cook there mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Joe and Nikki. At the, at the Bristol to go, and we opened that in 2007, okay. and uh, and that way I am still at affiliated with it, doing my cooking, doing the Creole, the Cajun, and um, uh, Caribbean cuisine. Okay. Yeah. So uh, so it's across in the Bristol to go. It's across culture food. Mm -hmm. So something good for everybody. Okay. You know. Well, I'm glad to see you. you you still doing your thing? Yeah. No, when you when you look back on all this, do, do you have any regrets? No, I don't have no regret. I think in myself, I have lived life to its fullest. I get everything that my heart desire out of life so far. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't easy. Nothing was easy. And I like that, you see, because you got to whine and whine and wine every day, not some days. You have to get up when you even don't feel well, you want to grow, you get up and you get things done every day. Says, you see, and that's why what I know, I know, and uh, I indulge in it. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking of doing anything bad that gonna limit my life, like getting caught, going to prison or something like that. Right. That's something I'd, uh, I'd never want to, to experience, mm -hmm. that wasn't for me. So when I see things get too tight and it's on the negative side, if there's any way for me to get out, I'm gone. Okay. Because my grandmother always used to say, Scare, scary chicken keep holes from bone. Mm. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. that's what she used to tell me. Mm -hmm. Says, meaning that if you see if uh, something is happening, 
Don't stand there and try to find a way what's going. Get, get out. going. Get out of there. And let him tell you about it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So so my life is complete. Awesome. I have a, have a very good life, music, cooking, you know, and meeting different kind of uh, uh, celebrities through the years. And uh, and uh, my, what's married? And I uh, have six uh, six children and six grandchildren. Oh, yeah. great, great, so, so, great. So, uh, so I'm, ha I'm happy all the way because I uh, live long enough to see my second generation and I'm looking forward to my, my third generation. There you go. Yeah, yeah. you know, but uh, I still have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna, and I'm, I'm keep learning every day. Right. Every day. Now, you've done a lot in your life. You've experienced a lot. But is there anything that, that you would like to do that you have not done yet? Well, yes. I would like to do this, <laughs> this on the spiritual part of it. I like to, in Masked Point, Andros, I would like to build a temple for the Lord. Okay. For all the great things that he have done for me, I thought it was time for me to do something where my neighbor Stringer was buried, and that is home in Masked Point Andros, and I am in the process of doing that, getting the property first. Once I get the property, then I will start that process of uh, building uh, that temple in Masked Point. And, uh, and I'm gonna have bungalows when people come over, like you yourself come over, and you might want to come for a retreat and just leave the I have the situation behind. Yeah. I have a place for you to live right there. Yeah, over the stay there. And, and then I'll have a nice restaurant that you can dine there also. Okay. Yeah, well. Now, do you, you plan on staying here or do you plan on uh, ever moving well, back? Well, I'll stay here until, uh, I'll stay here until that uh, come to reality. And then you're moving uh, but back But I'll, I'll be traveling backward and forward once it starts to be built. Mm -hmm. And then, and then once, it's, once it's completed, or do you plan on moving back home? Yes, uh, once it's completed, that's what uh, I'll come to. I'll come to Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh in, in Florida. I'll come to Pittsburgh in the summertime. Okay. And, but I don't want to deal with that snow no more. Because uh -huh. when I first come up here, snow, I, I didn't have no experience. I like to kill myself uh, coming one night with so much snow and ice was on the f on the on the road, mm -hmm. and I was coming down the uh, Wilkinsburg exit, and I apply my brakes, and <laughs> and the car just start flipping, sliding all around and wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong, and I finally fight the wheel and get it straightened out, <laughs> get it straightened out. That was my that was my greatest experience in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one night I'll never forget. Yeah. And it was snowing, snowing, and I didn't understand. And nobody teach me nothing but driving on snow. Mm -hmm. I snow. I, I learned Pittsburgh for myself. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah, yes, good. I did. And 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 I don't think uh, even the natives in 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 Pittsburgh can lose me in Pittsburgh because I've explored Pittsburgh for myself. Yeah, you by catering. You, you can get around in the dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For some some like, and the good thing about Pittsburgh for me, after I find out where I fit in that, I, I got a rest out of me a catering business, restaurant business in uh, Swissville, PA. Okay. And I stayed here for 14 and a half years. That's great. Yeah, keep on growing from from nothing to something. I find out I find a way I, where I fit in that. Yeah. And the, and the blessed thing about that, uh, when they used to have this ample theater down here in Station Square. Mm -hmm. I joined up with uh, uh, the Cesar Engler right. and, 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 and company. And I used to do, I, I stayed with them for 11 and a half years. And I used to do all the uh, New Orleans, um, uh, the New Orleans. Uh, uh, what, dishes? Yes, uh, I did New Orleans dishes and when the cabaret and all that stuff like that, when they do down there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that was a, a big thing every year they used to do down there. They bring in all different kind of stars and, and uh, on down in Station Square, Barry Wright, the OJs, the uh, 
Ace Wind and Fire, uh -huh. uh, Barry White, uh, uh -huh. Johnny Mathis, the the, uh, um, uh, the Simpson. You know that cartoon, The Simpson. Yeah. They had them down there, and I fed them down there in Station Square too. Very good. So it was a great experience working with uh, CZ England. Good, good was four brothers to them, and they liked the way I the way I do. Well, I tell you, it was a great experience for me, man, sitting here talking to you, man. I appreciate it. Looking forward to that book. Yes. And looking forward to uh, you doing some uh, some cooking, demonstrating some 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 of your uh, famous dishes. Yes, sir. And so, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, uh, we're out a little we're out of time right now for the interview segment. So we thank you and keep keep tuning in because we're not done. But we want to thank you and uh, and. Uh, I tell you what, why don't we uh, do some cooking now? How's that sound? Some cooking? Yeah. That sounds good. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Chef Alfredo, up close and personal. All right. We are about to start this dish here for you. And this dish is, uh, dish is called Chicken Isabel. And this is a dish you can get at the Bristol restaurant every Thursday. This is a dish that uh, can accommodate your, for your lunch or your dinner. And the, the way we're going to cook this for you, this boneless breast of chicken, cut up medallion style, and I'm going to run this through some flour, dusted with flour, and then when this chicken is golden brown on both sides, put it a little bit of flour here. Want to make sure that everything is cut right. So uh, this chicken is cut in medallion style. And it's smaller than the Right, and the smaller it is, the faster it will cook. But this is a meal you can put together yourself. And uh, we like to teach you about uh, the boning uh, chicken breasts. So you know when you go to the store, you can just get the chicken breast with bone in. And then I'll take this chicken here, turn it over one by one, then I start to saute this here and this oil. And we do this for a couple of minutes until the chicken is done. Now, this chicken breast is pounded and break down all the gristle, make it, uh, uh, it will be quick to cook. So, we don't want the chicken breast to be tough. We want it to be very tender. So that's what we do. Yes. Take a little while to put it all in there one by one. But the benefit from it is greater than, than the meal itself when you do it this way. Okay. Now, we represent Bristol uh, to go restaurant on the north side. Okay. It take a little, it take a minute for to uh, to be golden brown, so that's a good part of it. So if the heat, if the pan was at the right temperature, it wouldn't take so long. So you have to be careful with that also. But temperature, you don't want it to be burnt. You want to it when it's cook, start cooking, then it comes out golden brown, and that's what we want. That's what I wanted to demonstrate for you. Make sure that I'm showing you the right way to cook this, this delicious meal. And I, myself, I've created this meal by the name of Chicken Isabel. Yes, I have, and I have demonstrated it all over Pittsburgh uh, and elsewhere where I have cooked, Florida, New Orleans, And of course, I'm in Pittsburgh now. <laughs> we, ain't gonna, we ain't gonna forget about Pittsburgh. 
Pittsburgh is where it's at. I find out uh, where I fit in in Pittsburgh. I hear the negative things of Pittsburgh, but I didn't let that stuff trouble me. What I have done, I find out where I fit in Pittsburgh. And I define that myself, and I never look back. I've set some goals for myself, and I achieved them all. Pittsburgh. And, uh, yes. Now they're getting there. Now they're getting there. It take a little, take a little while because we want to be sure that the chicken is done promptly. So it'll take a little bit longer than the shrimp do because chicken must be chicken is like like pork. It must be cooked well done. Right. Yes, and that's why the temperature is so important. This is a slow fire. Hmm? Okay. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. We begin to get that golden brown color. Yes. Mmm. So, when this chicken is sauteed, then I will take sliced onion, dice. Tomatoes, okay. and most of the dishes I designed uh, from the island has come over either steam rice or either peas and rice, even when I do some curry goat or oxtail, you know. Now, onion please. Mm-hmm. So Angel is uh, dice slicing up the onion. Soriano. Nice, nice. Tomatoes. We got small diced tomatoes, not very really big. Ah, nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Give me your garlic powder. Thank you. Mm. So now, why is it made in onion saute and then we'll add some flavor to it. And put some garlic powder. Thank you. All right, may I have that uh, hot fine? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, most of the Creole dishes and the Caribbean dishes, they use a lot of leave time because of the fragrance and the flavor that it gives. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now, of course, this dish, you can also put mushroom in this dish also. You can do you can do your own interpretation of this dish. So, I'd like to show you what it looked like for now. And the smell is so great. All right. And then we're gonna toss this up, toss it up, toss it up, toss it up. Well, I can teach you about pan, doing the pan that way. It's a, it's a trick to it. So it's all about motion, it's not strength. Because if you use strength, then you'll have to pick the food up off the floor. And we don't want that to happen. <laughs> we don't want that to happen to you. Okay. And this is what that looked like. Now, once I get this caramelized like it's supposed to, then I will add the other ingredients to it. Uh, give me the paprika green. Thank you. A little uh, paprika. Okay. Yes, and this is uh, what I am looking for. Have a good consistency, and it's just a bit ready. So when this uh, saute a little bit longer, then what I'll add, I will add some Shibli wine, some Shibli wine to it, and a little bit of spice. Thank you. 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 Th
thank you. Okay. And give me that uh, the cayenne pepper. Yeah. Spice it up a little bit. The spice is always good for you. It's good. It's good for your body. The spice. But I don't want it too spicy. We want it just enough that you can enjoy the food. Because it's very important. Some people doesn't like a lot of spice. But me, I love spice myself. But I don't try to cook uh, for me all the time. I cook for the customers all the time. And like I said, you can come to Bristo to go on Thursday and enjoy these dishes uh, on Thursday. Again, we have facility to host uh, 85 people for a wedding, a uh, graduation, or whatever the case may be, you can come there and uh, we'll be glad to, to assist you in what your needs are. Okay? All right. So this is red. This is ready now. This is uh, the finished product of the chicken Isabel. Yes, thank you very much. And I hope that you will oh, enjoy. Let's pre yes. put a presentation on a plate. Yes, <laughs> on a plate. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to take this spoon. Ah, yeah, and we're going to put this on here. All right. Chicken Isabel. So you were saying about the spices, you can always drop them up afterwards if you want to cut it. Right. That's how I like mine. There you go. Okay, that would be the last one. That's the last one. Okay. You want the last one to be spicy more? That's it, because that, that look awful in All right. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. And that's, uh, that's the chicken Isabel. So sit back, relax, and enjoy our cuisine. Bon tea. And we hope to see you at the bistro. <laughs> yes. We'll see you at the bistro to go. Cut the front up from here. All right, thank you. <laughs>